Hey guys, welcome back to another video. In this one, we're gonna be talking about a custom made shoulder rig for getting really, really smooth cinematic handheld. So, a couple things before we jump into this beast and the parts, the cost, why I'm even doing this in the first place, I wanna bring a few things to your attention. Number one, this is kind of the second video in a series on handheld rigs. So, I've already done one called the ultimate handheld rig, this is a shoulder rig. And I'm actually using the handheld rig on top of the shoulder rig right now. So I would encourage you to check that video out first. And shoulder rigs give you a different look compared to handheld. So check that video out. We built this whole thing that you see up here for around $500. This shoulder rig that we're using today is under $500. So when you combine the handheld rig with the shoulder rig, we're talking about something under $1,000 that's very custom, yet you can swap the camera out without any problems. Another thing to keep in mind is I have a blog post over at my website, link will be in the description, where I detail every piece to build this shoulder rig and a detailed guide as to how to build it. We're not using off the shelf one shoulder rig kit. I'm using various parts from Amazon and a lot of small rig stuff as you could imagine to build this. You can use any camera you want and I think it's pretty awesome. So let's go over the rig itself and talk about some of its features. So the camera is completely removable. Again, we're using the handheld rig from a previous video I already did. It just snaps on to the top. Then we have a nice, really affordable, really nice and comfortable shoulder pad, which uh, gives us the ability to add 15 millimeter rods. And as you can see here, I'm using nice long rods, which I really like. I like to keep my hands, as you see here, around 90 degrees. It's very comfortable. I can be sitting here for a long period of time working the camera. Another perk to having longer handles like you see here is stabilization depending on where you're sitting or kneeling. So if I'm like this sitting down on a stool like I am here or on a curb or on an apple box, these handles are long enough where I can put my knees up and release my hands or better yet, keep my hands on the handle but keep a rock steady shot. So instead of moving tripods, getting all kinds of um, sliders set up, I can essentially crouch down, put my uh, hands on my knees and get a rock solid shot, quickly move around, because if you do independent films or documentaries, there's no time to get a ton of setups in if you're using a lot of equipment. So something like this is wonderful for getting a locked off shot or keep one hand on one knee and just kind of do one of these numbers where you're just slowly moving off to one side. So really, really dig it for that reason. It's also comfortable. Keeping your hands down here is a lot easier than doing one of these for 30 minutes at a time. But if you prefer to have your hands kind of choked up closer to the camera, you could totally do that with this setup. Another thing we're doing is using a monitoring system, which I'll actually go ahead and fire up here. Just like in our previous handheld video, the camera and the monitor are powered off of a single MPF battery, which is just kind of behind, hidden behind the camera here, and it works great. No need to deal with multiple batteries. All I have to worry about is a single battery and we're good to go. So I'm using the exact same monitor and monitor arm from the previous video. So this whole monitor setup can snap onto the top of the camera and we can run around handheld, go into tripod mode or drop it onto the shoulder rig and move it down to this uh, NATO rail here on the shoulder rig. So really, really easy to set up, very quick to switch between setups. Another thing that I love about this and really something that came out at the perfect time as I was making this whole rig is the nano nucleus from Tilta. So you'll notice down here on this hand, I have a wireless controller. I can stop and start recordings. And then up here on the camera end, we have another motor. You might be able to see that, but I'm actually changing my focus right now. I love this thing. It has been such a dream to work with. A lot of wireless systems are already available, but this is the first one where you just connect it and you're done. It works so well. There's a couple little nitpicky things that I don't like, but maybe we'll save that for a future review. So what I've done is I've added it to a monitor arm and I can move it around to be in different positions depending on what I'm doing. So in this position, I'll move my hands up here so you can see a little better. I can keep my hand on the actual handle of this rig but also fully have access to the ring. And often what I found myself doing is using a single finger, just like my index finger is here, and just using that to make fine adjustments as I'm moving forward and back, left to right, whatever I need to do 
with my focus. It's a really great system. It's super compact and it works with most lenses. Some lenses I found the motor struggle a little, little bit, but you could buy bigger, better motors because this whole system works with all of Tilta's other follow focus gear. So that's really it for focus. I will say I lied a little bit earlier when I said everything's run off of one single battery. Um, this focus system, uh, the motor in particular, does need five volts via USB. So I have strapped on just a tiny little USB battery. It runs forever, um, so I don't really have to worry about charging it, but that's just strapped to the rails here and uh, run up to this little motor. So I'll go ahead and show you some footage from this. Now, some of you might be thinking, why in the world would you want something this bulky to go film with? Why not just use a GH5 or a camera with in-body stabilization or grab a gimbal? Uh, and the reason for that is similar to what I explained in the last video. It's just not the same. This kind of look is going to give you what I consider to be way more cinematic uh, images than using just a gimbal floating around your subject. Same with in-body stabilization. It's just not the same as good old fashioned stabilized weight. I've really been enjoying using it and I'm going to be taking it out a lot more. Things are about to change here on the channel, ladies and gentlemen. We might have a second space available to us and I'm hoping to take you guys outside, which will be fun. A lot of people will say, Caleb, get outdoors, you need some sun. And I do go outside, but you don't really see that here on the channel because it takes a lot of time to produce content on the go. And I prefer to get more videos out to you than take longer to do more advanced shoots and whatnot. Hoping to change that here in the future, and that's part of this rig. So I want to get back to traditional handheld footage. I think it looks incredibly cinematic. Not a lot of people are doing it in our space these days, thanks to gimbals. And I think it's a type of camera movement that should not be ignored. And back in the day, you had to spend thousands and thousands of dollars to get something like this. But as you can see, aside from the camera lens and this monitor, this whole setup is around a thousand bucks, actually $2 over 1000. So not gonna break the bank. Again, you can swap cameras out, no problem at all. You could put an FS5 you know, on here if you wanted to, or a C200 and you'd be good to go. The only other thing you need to add is a monitor. I've been using the Shinobi, really, really digging it with this setup, super lightweight. But you could throw a recorder on here and uh, be able to make sure you're actually recording or use just a more affordable monitor like the Andy Cine, which I absolutely love. So that's gonna do it for this video, guys. Hopefully you picked a couple things up. Uh, looking forward to using this more in the future. Check out that blog post with all the parts and how to build it. That's it for me. We'll see you guys in the next video.